I've always been a pretty rational person, not one to jump to conclusions or believe in the supernatural. In fact, I'm originally from Ohio and have lived here my entire life. Currently, I am working as a construction worker, so you could say I'm pretty grounded in reality. Now, it all started my story back when I was around 10 years old. My family had recently moved into a very old house on the outskirts of town. The house itself was really nothing special, but it had a character and we were just excited to make it our own. During the evening time, after playing outside with friends, I decided to head back home before it got too dark. As I'm walking back through the woods towards my house, I spotted something odd and out of place in the sky. It looked like a bright light just sitting there hovering right above the trees. I assumed at first it might be a chopper or a plane, but even at the time, none of those made sense because it wasn't making any noise. It seemed to be completely stationary. Well, my curiosity peaked, and I continued to watch the light as I made my way home. When I finally reached my backyard, I could not help but stare at the mysterious object, and before I knew it, I was engulfed in a blinding white light. I don't really know how to describe it, but it made me entirely disoriented, and I recall waking up on a steel slab of some kind with these dark shadows around me. All I felt was a burning, painful sensation on the bottom of my feet and on my chest. I couldn't really open my eyes that much, just from what I remember. I can't tell you anything about how much time it took or how long I was conscious for because I didn't really have any concept of time. I just remember at some point or another I blacked back out. When I awoke, which was back in my bedroom, I had this throbbing, stinging, burning pain on my entire left side of my body. Now this pain would come and go for the next roughly 10 days or so, I was never able to explain it. Now it did subside and I never did go to a doctor's to try and figure out what it was. I mean, looking back, what was I supposed to tell them? I saw a UFO in the sky, I was abducted, and now I have throbbing pain on my left side. <laughs> yeah, that would have went over really well. Not to mention, my parents wouldn't have believed me either. Which, looking back, I think that's also part of the reason why I didn't mention anything. Okay, so let's fast forward to 2015. I was working on a construction project here in Columbus. One evening after work, I decided to grab a drink at a bar with a friend of mine, and I sat there nursing my beer, and I couldn't help but overhear a conversation between two of my coworkers. They were also talking about a strange experience they had only a few months prior about seeing something strange in the sky. Of course, they were laughing and talking about conspiracies and just how ridiculous it was. Well, I'm not going to mention his name, so I'll call him Thomas. He was going on about how he was serious and that he really did see something near his home, which I believed he said was in southern Columbus. Looking back, I guess I should have gone over there and struck up conversation with the guy, but I didn't really want to put salt on an open wound, if you know what I mean. I mainly just eavesdropped and listened, but for me, it is complete verification that there is strange things going on all around us, not just in Ohio or heck, maybe even the United States, but all around us. And I think a lot of us are afraid to come forward with our experiences, like mine. I don't even tell that many people about mine, but I figured posting it here anonymously might be the best chance I have at some sort of reassurance that others have gone what I've gone through. I'm also not the guy out here waving a big flag, screaming I got abducted by aliens, but Honestly, after all these years, that's really the only rational thought I could have, if you would even want to call that rational, but I can't refute my experience. Even though I was in and out of consciousness, it was still very vivid. The pain and the sensations, it was not a dream, it was not a vision, it was not a hallucination. And then on top of that, I also can't explain me waking up in my bedroom as well as the throbbing, stinging, burning sensation all over the left side of my body for the two weeks that followed. 
None of it made sense. And it wasn't until much later as an adult that I would learn more about this and understand that there's actually quite a handful of people who've recounted very similar experiences in their, I guess you could say, abduction cases. Anyway, call me crazy. I don't care. That's my experience, and I'm just sharing it. I'm a big fan of the supernatural, and really anything that gives me a good scare. My friends share the same mutual interest, so we often found ourselves going on these little excursions to explore supposedly abandoned or creepy places around our hometown in Ohio. Now let me tell you about what happened just last Saturday night. We had ventured out to an old abandoned farm located just outside of Toledo. The place has been known for years to have some sort of eerie energy surrounding it. There's been people who've reported strange occurrences like shadows or orbs or even lights in the sky. I know, sounds pretty crazy, right? But we figured, hey, let's give it a shot. We gathered up a small group of people. Myself, Mark, Steve, Steve's older sister, Sarah, and her boyfriend, Kevin. After fueling up with some snacks and a couple monsters and Red Bulls, we headed out towards the farm. It was already getting dark when we arrived at the entrance. Just a rusty, dilapidated gate stood before us, barely hanging on to its hinges. Despite the scene, we couldn't help but crack some Jerry Seinfeld-esque jokes. "'What's the deal with abandoned farms?' I quipped, trying to keep the mood light. As we entered the property, the air felt very thick and heavy, as if something did not want us there. But we shrugged it off and began exploring the various areas. We checked out some remnants of what used to be barns and stables. We also saw decaying structures, revealing rotting wood and long-forgotten equipment. After a while, we explored a little further, Not finding anything supernatural, just an abandoned structure that time had forgot. We came across a small, decrepit shack situated near the edge of the property at the far back. The door hung open, kind of inviting us in. Against our better judgment, we ventured in. The interior was just covered in dust and cobwebs. Now, as we looked further, we can hear strange noises outside like branches snapping or something or someone approaching. We just thought it was animals or maybe the wind messing with us. When Mark suddenly gasps, pointing out something just beyond the tree line. We all saw it. But before we could react, Sarah claimed she felt something tugging at her. Panicked, we all scrambled out of the shack and back into the open field. We were all frantically breathing. I guess we were on the verge of a near panic attack, realizing that either we were paranoid or something was truly going on here. After a moment, and properly regaining our composure, we decided to head back towards the entrance. Now, as we went that way, we could still feel that something from the woodline was watching us, constantly watching us. Now, we eventually made our way to an old well that was located near the center of the property on the way back. And as we got close to it, it seemed harmless enough, but there was this aura of darkness surrounding it. You could hear the creaking wood echoing through the night. We would freeze in place, realizing the sound was coming from within the well itself. The wooden beams supporting the pulley system groaned under some unseen weight, and the rope slowly began to rise. Of course, irrational thoughts raced through our minds, Could something be trapped inside the well? Was there an entity here luring us with its supernatural powers? Before it had reached the top, it suddenly stopped, the wood heavily creaking even more. And then we heard was a violent crash, like the metal bucket being thrown against the wall of the well. We all jumped, screamed, adrenaline surging through our bodies. That was enough for us. We turned and sprinted back towards the entrance as fast as our legs could carry us. In fact, we didn't stop running until we reached the car. We were pretty shaken from the experience. A couple of us glanced back as we drove away, but we didn't see anything. So, as far as this farm being haunted, well, I don't know. But we definitely saw something there outside of Toledo. 
whether it was something supernatural or maybe it was just a series or maybe it was just a series of coincidences, I can't say for sure. But remember, if you ever go urban exploring, just make sure you bring the necessary equipment with you and of course your wits because you never know what might be there that you would be unprepared for. This happened back in October of 2016 while I was visiting my parents' house in rural Ohio. I had been playing with their dogs outside around dusk and went inside to grab a cold drink. My father had been working on his computer in the living room, but wandered into the kitchen looking like he wanted to say something. He was pale and sweaty, just kind of staring into space, so I was naturally concerned. He wouldn't tell me what was wrong at first, but I finally got out of him that he had seen a massive, black, wolf-like creature walking by the window. Now, I told him it must have been a large dog or maybe a coyote, but he insisted it was something else. He said it was too big to be a dog, and it had a strange, almost human-like gait. I could tell he was genuinely scared, so I decided to go out and investigate. I grabbed a flashlight and my dad's hunting rifle, just in case, and headed out into the woods behind their house. The sun had completely set by this point, and the woods were very quiet. I walked for about 20 minutes, scanning the area with my flashlight, but couldn't see anything out of the ordinary. I was about to head back when I heard a low growl come from the bushes to my left. I slowly turned my flashlight toward the sound, and that's when I saw a pair of glowing yellow eyes staring right back at me from the dark. I couldn't make out the shape, but it was definitely larger than any dog or coyote that I'd ever seen. I'd raised the rifle. My hands were trembling, and I tried to steady my aim. The creature did not move. It just continued to stare at me with those unnerving eyes. I stood there for what felt like forever, locked in some standoff with this predator. My heart was nearly beating out of my chest. I could feel the sweat dripping down my back. I knew I had to make a decision, and now, either shoot or back away slowly. I decided to take a step back and see if this thing would react. To my surprise, it did not move. I took another step back, and then another, all the while keeping my flashlight and rifle trained on this thing. It just continued to stare at me, never moving or making a sound. As I continued to back away, I noticed that the creature's eyes seemed to change color, shifting from yellow to a deep, glowing green. I couldn't explain it. I finally was able to reach the edge of the woods and break into a run, heading right back to my parents' house as fast as I possibly could. When I burst through the door, my dad was there, waiting for me, his face a mixture of concern and relief. Now I told him what I'd seen, and he just nodded, saying he had seen the same thing. We made the decision not to tell my mother, as she was already on the edge from living in such a remote area. Fun fact about my mom, she absolutely hated rural areas, before this encounter and after. She was always a city girl at heart, so being out here just really bothered her. Anyway... We locked all the doors and windows, and my dad and I took turns keeping watch throughout the night. Well, fortunately, we didn't see anything, although there were a few times I could have sworn I heard something scratching and clawing trying to get to the front door. But fortunately, we never saw it. Well, the next day, we looked around the house. We didn't find anything, but there was this pungent odor of wet dog and rotting meat all around the area of the home. We also went back to the woods to see if we can find any other evidence, or any substantial evidence. There were some large paw prints in the mud and a few broken branches, but nothing that could definitively prove what we had seen. So we just decided, for the longest time until recently, to keep it to ourselves, because not only could you attract unwanted attention, if you know what I mean, 
but you could also make yourself out to be a complete kook. Now, over the years, to the people I've told this story to, I've come up with various explanations for what we saw that night. The only thing I can think of is Dogman. But even then, I'm not quite sure if that's accurate. Hell, I don't even know if they exist. I can only go by what I saw. And, well, that I can't dispute as something that's not in reality, because I saw it firsthand. I'm not really one to share personal stories, especially here on Reddit, but after what happened to me just a couple months ago, I feel like it's important to get this out there. Who knows, maybe I'm not crazy after all. Now, for starters, I live in a very small town in Ohio. My life, for the most part, is very ordinary. I work a 9 to 5, I have a wife, I have two young kids, I also enjoy spending my weekends fishing or watching TV if I can to relax. Now, as you can see, pretty normal life. But if we go back to a Tuesday evening when I had just finished a long shift at work, my wife gave me a ring earlier and let me know that our son had a serious accident. He is apparently in the ER and he took a nasty hit during soccer. She was already there at the hospital with him. So I knew I had to go straight there right after work. Now, the hospital was roughly about a 30-minute drive from where I was working, and it was already starting to get dark out. This is important later. Now, the easiest way to get there, without avoiding rush hour traffic, was to head right through the winding country roads. Now, if you're not used to driving these kinds of roads, it can definitely make you nervous. Lots of twists and turns, and it could be very easy to miss the exit you're looking for. If anyone out there reading this is a determined and nervous wreck of a dad like I am, you'll have already gotten anxiety just from this part of the story. One thing that always blows me away about these particular roads is that there's no streetlights, so when the sun goes down, it gets very dark and dramatically limits how fast you can go. And by now, it was practically completely dark. All right, so... Now that we have the base of the story established, here's what happened next. All right, so I was about halfway to the hospital, and I saw something out of the ordinary, some sort of figure right near the edge of the woods, right by the road. I could tell it was tall and slender, but that it had the arms long down past its knees. Other than those things, I couldn't make out any other immediate features. But I knew one thing that this had to have been an animal of some kind and definitely not a person because the proportions were all wrong. So I slowed down to try and get a better look or hoping that maybe it was just a bear or a wolf and it needed to pass. But the closer I got, the more confused and disturbed I was because it looked so wrong, never like an animal I'd ever seen before. Now, I just continued driving the best I could, trying to convince myself that maybe it was just a trick of the light, but something that stood out from the norm regardless. When I finally arrived at the hospital, my wife and son were in the waiting room. Thankfully, my son's injuries were minor. I mean, the kid got a few good scrapes and bruises, but we were able to take him home that night with nothing serious. Now, I never mentioned what I had saw on the way to the hospital, I didn't want to freak out my wife or my son. They had already had a stressful enough evening. Now, over the following few days, the thought of what I saw just kept popping up in my mind. I even drove back there one evening to see if I could see it again, but there was nothing ever there. I tried to put it out of my mind and just focus on life, but it's like it kept coming back to me or calling me. Well, get this. So about a week after the initial sighting, I was just lying there in my bed, unable to sleep. Now, my wife at this point had been sound asleep. She was snoring away. I decided that maybe I just needed to get up and go for a walk and clear my head. So I grabbed my flashlight and headed out. Now, as I walked, there's a nice little loop that I like to do right around our neighborhood. Now, when you get to a certain spot in the road, it becomes a large patch of trees for about a block or two, and then goes back to houses. This is nothing special, like a forest or anything, it's just undeveloped land. Alright, now here's where things get strange. 
So I'm coming right up to this plot of land to my left, and I'm probably maybe about a half a block away, and I'm lost in thought, and something out of the ordinary happens. It's like this instinct of mine instantly kick in, and it tells me that something really bad is going to happen. Now, I'm not kidding. I was thinking about something work or life related, not even thinking anything bad is going to happen. And now all of a sudden, my instincts are going off. I have the gut intuition telling me something very bad is about to happen. You need to turn around. I don't know how to explain it, but I didn't listen to my gut. I just decided to keep walking because I figured, you know what? There's nobody out. If I'm going to get mugged or attacked, I could see them. And so I have a good enough vision to run if I do. And so I got about halfway between the houses, the neighborhoods, and in between this plot where there's no land at all. It's just forest. And I could feel a set of eyes looking at me. Now I stopped and I turned to go look at the wood line, and I swear I could still make out what I saw. It wasn't a person. It was what I believe to be the same shape I saw the night before. Now, it's not like it was illuminated. It was very dark out, but it was enough that I could see enough of a silhouette to know that the shape was nearly identical. I didn't spend any extra time looking around. I just turned around, quickened my pace, and headed right back home. So I promise that I'm not having my imagination run wild here. The first thing I saw about a week prior. What are your thoughts on all this? What do you want to make of it? I truly believe that this thing, this animal of some kind, put a mark on me, and maybe that's why I couldn't get it out of my head. But of course, that's all speculation, but I wanted to post this all to see what you guys think. In the late 1990s, I was living in an apartment complex outside of Dayton, Ohio, It was a small and quiet building, but there was always something ghastly about it, like it was haunted or something. At times, you would hear these strange noises coming from inside the walls at night. Sometimes things would go missing, only to randomly reappear in different places later on. One day, my neighbor came over to ask me if I wanted to participate in a seance with her and a few of her relatives. She claimed that she had been hearing voices and footsteps as well, and thought it could be restless spirits. Now, at first, I was hesitant, but eventually decided what, why not, and I joined them, since it was good old fun then. Now, we gathered in her living room, and one of the other cousins of hers, who was familiar, very familiar, I guess, with conducting seances, led us through the whole thing. Apparently, he was a very let's just say, well-experienced witch. We sat in a circle, holding hands, closed our eyes, and we called out to anything that was there. At first, nothing happened. It was quiet, except for the occasional creak. But then I started to smell something sweet, kind of like perfume, actually. It wasn't really overpowering, but it was noticeable enough for me to mention this to the group out loud. And as I'm saying this, we suddenly hear a loud bang coming from one of the bedrooms. We all jumped up, our eyes open wide, and we could see that the door had slammed shut on its own. Now, at this point, we're all startled and confused because there's no way the wind is responsible for this. None of us were close enough to shut the door accidentally. The person leading the seance decided we should try to communicate with whatever it was in the room. So we all stood up, approached the door, which was still shut tightly, and she began asking questions out loud, hoping for some kind of response. As she spoke, I noticed a strange energy filled the air. It felt very oppressive and heavy and ominous, like something was in that room that hated us, like it did not want us there. And then I remember seeing a doorknob starting to turn on its own. What we saw next will scar me forever. Now keep in mind the room was completely empty, but there in the corner was a dark figure. It was like a human, but it was completely made of black, like it was some smoky, misty mass, a shadow, I guess. 
Whatever it was, it was a presence that you could feel all the negativity emanating from. Without hesitation, the figure began moving towards us, slowly at first, but quickly picked up speed until it was charging directly at us. All of us screaming, we ran out of the apartment, slamming the door behind us. Now, after that night, I actually never spoke to that neighbor again. In fact, I avoided her completely because I did not want to be involved or be attached to anything, whatever that was. This is a story that happened to me about six years ago when I was still in college. It's something that I've never really been able to shake off or explain. Now, my friends and I had recently gotten into hiking, and we decided to try out this new trail one night after hearing some interesting stories. People talked about seeing Bigfoot, apparently. Other people, of course, mentioned how strange the trail felt, as if they were ghosts or something on the path. Well, the area itself was very beautiful, very scenic, and I guess it was quite popular for night hikes as well, just because when the moon was full, it was so bright that it would illuminate the entire path and you wouldn't need a flashlight. So this is one of the trails we chose, hoping we could at least see something. Now this is roughly about 15 miles outside of our town. It wasn't too difficult of a hike, but it did have some fairly steep inclines and narrow paths through dense pieces of brush. We got there at about 9 p.m., excited and hopeful to see Bigfoot, or at least something interesting on camera. There were seven of us in total, all eager to try and capture the elusive on film. However, as we began our hike, thick clouds started to form over the sky, making everything so much darker than anticipated. I already felt a bit nervous due to the unfamiliar surroundings, and it just felt eerie. But we pressed on anyway, hoping the clouds would eventually clear up and it wouldn't be so darn dark. Now, the plan was simple stick together throughout the entire hike, but as we would venture further along the trail, it became increasingly difficult to do so. Everyone began walking at different paces, and soon enough, we found ourselves separated by considerable distances, despite being surrounded by my friends just moments before. I suddenly felt very alone in the dark woods, in order to shake off my ever-growing anxiety, I picked up my pace, trying to catch up with those ahead of me. I'm not really one to believe in paranormal phenomena, but I couldn't help but feel that something was off. There was an atmosphere here that didn't match the natural serenity of any forest. My heart continued to race faster, and I considered to stop and wait for my friends who were lagging behind. But the overwhelming sense of dread... I feel, had consumed me, and it prevented me from slowing down. Now, it took us roughly about an hour to reach our destination in mind. It was a beautiful clearing with an incredible view of the landscape, now illuminated fully by the moon, which had finally emerged from behind the clouds. To my utter disbelief, all of my friends were already there waiting for me. How is this possible? I hadn't seen any of them pass me on the trail, and... I was certain that at least two of them were still behind me. As I tried to wrap my head around this bizarre event, one of my friends shared his own strange experience from earlier in the evening. He told me this. About halfway through the hike, he noticed that one of his shoelaces had come undone. He stopped to tie it back up and urged the rest of us to continue without him, assuring us that he'd catch up shortly. After fixing his shoe, he resumed walking along the path, following the direction we had gone in. But after ten minutes or so, he came across the exact spot where he had stopped to tie his shoelace earlier. It was as if he had somehow walked in a loop, even though the trail had been a straight path during that stretch. Now, my friend isn't someone who believes in supernatural events either, but he couldn't deny how shaken he was by this incident. The rest of us also admitted to feeling strange throughout the hike, like there was something different. None of us could really explain it or provide a rational explanation for what had transpired that night. 
We were just paranoid, maybe letting the imaginations of the best of us just run wild? Or did we truly experience something otherworldly? I don't know. All I gotta say is the energy around this place, it felt off. 